The Aus, like many other communities in Nagaland too, have their own music and historic tales. One such tales is the legend of Ediban and Gina. As a walk down the history lane, we are going to recollect this very popular Aus historic tale today. Long time ago, in an old Ao village called Mopong Chuket, lived a man called Gina. He was a coarse-looking man and was from poor family background. Even though he does not possess ideal physical quality like other fellow youths, he was polite and ravine-hearted among all men. He was also a highly skilled player of the cup violin, a stringed instrument made of dried gourd. In that same village also lived a very beautiful woman called Ediben. She was from wealthy family. Her hobby was to decorate herself with ornaments. Etiben is believed to have amber-colored skin and had big dovey eyes. Gina was deeply in love with Etiben, but he knew she was out of his league, so he decided to make a love potion and smear it on his dao, and waits for Etiben to return from the field. One evening, as Etiben was returning from the field, he sliced a fresh cucumber with his dao and gave it to Etiben. Little do Ediben knows that the dao in which Gina sliced the cucumber has a love potion already smeared on it. As soon as she eat the cucumber slice, she was suddenly charmed by Gina's potion, and they fell in love despite their background contrast. Days goes by. Many suitors came forward for Ediben's hand, but she was already being charmed by Gina's spell. Ediben and Gina knew about their respective families' wealth gap and felt that their love would never be approved by her parents. Therefore, they didn't feel comfortable declaring their love publicly. So away from their village, the two begin to meet secretly in the mountains near water holes. There Gina would play his cup violin while Ediben would wash her ornaments listening to Gina's playing. They would just sit for hours in the forest happy in each other's presence. Gradually, their frequent meetings had now become an everyday thing and slowly their bond became unbreakable. One day, despite all the care they took to not get spotted, Ediben's parents did come to know. They made the two lovers confess their feelings for each other. While Ediben's parents didn't have a problem with Gina, they were wary of his poverty. They felt that love alone was impractical to take care of their princess-like daughter. They doubted Gina's ability to provide for Ediben in day-to-day -day life, because those were the days when men used to pay dowry to marry a woman. Keeping with the village tradition, Ediben's parents demanded a dowry of cows and oxen from Gina. Gina knew that he had no way of procuring the cattle with his poverty, but he accepted the challenge anyways as he cannot able to witness Ediben marrying other men. Ediben wanted to protest, but she knew that her parents' mind was already made up and it will be a waste. So instead, she decided to stay in silence and waited on Gina, no matter how long he took. Gina tried several ways to procure the cattle dowry, but his poverty worked against him and he ran out of time span allotted to him by Ediben's parents and he eventually had to give up. As soon as Ediben's parents realized Gina had given up the dowry, they open up the proposal invitation to all suitors. Youths from all walks of life line up for Ediben's hand. Among them was a rich landowner named Tenyur from Sangratsu village, who also heard about Ediben's parents' conditions for marriage to her. With his abundant wealth, he wasted no time in getting the cattle and presenting himself in front of Ediben's house. With dowry ready, he asked for Ediben's hand. Ediben's parents were only too happy to oblige, since they had found a rich match for their daughter. Ediben tried several tricks to postpone her marriage with Tenure, so that she and Gina could find some way for their own. Even on the days leading up to the marriage, she feigned sickness and remained bedridden, so that the occasion would be postponed. But in the end, she had no choice but to consent to Tenure. In a gala event, Ediben was married to Tenure, while Gina had no choice but to look on helplessly. Despite the turn of events, he never got angry at Ediben. He acknowledged that she was a victim of circumstances and continued to love her dearly. Meanwhile, Ediben's own marriage was not a happy one. Gina was an empathetic man. He respected Ediben and loved her exactly for what she was. But Tenure had the mentality of a manipulative businessman. For him, Ediben was a housewife who should do his chores. That's exactly how he treated her. Ediben could no longer be her original personality, but had to fulfill the role that was expected by a man with a powerful stance in the society. Ediben felt like a prisoner in her new home and soon could no longer take it anymore. 
While Tenure was away for the day overseeing his vast farmlands being worked on by the farmers he had hired, Edeben prepared dinner for her husband and slipped out of the house and started meeting Gina again. Just like last time, they meet near the waterhold beneath the lush mountain. Gina plays a song on his cup violin for Edeben. Edeben washes his ornaments just like old times while listening to Gina's music in a trance. With Gina, Edeben found love and comfort. While the meetings happened once in a while for some days, they became too frequent for their own good. Tenure was a man with riches and he had too many men throughout the land as his hires. Too many on his side? It was only a matter of time before Etiben was spotted with Gina and Tenure coming to know. One evening, Tenure wait for Etiben's return in a field not too far away. As soon as he met her, he thrashed Etiben in a fit of rage, inflicting serious wounds. Her limp body was left outside the vast fields that Tenure owned. Somehow that late evening, Gina came to know about Etiben's condition. He rushed to the spot, took in a badly injured Etiben in his house and started nursing her wounds carefully. Etiben would often collapse into hours of crying and Gina would comfort her, always staying by her side whether day or night. The wounds started making Etiben sick. Finally, they were too much for her body and she succumbed. With Etiben dead, Gina was overcome with inconsolable grief. He stopped eating, drinking, or sleeping. His grief and depression had ill effects on his body, and he too died shortly. Next morning, the village youths goes to retrieve both Gina and Etiben's bodies. As they villagers burned their bodies, they saw a wisp of smoke shaped like two persons holding each other's hand. It is believed to be that of Gina's and Etiben's soul ascending to the sky. Thus the two lovers were united in afterlife. Gina and Etiben, whose couple was separated by a huge wealth gap and family objection, they could never come together as a married couple. But for Aus, they are the symbol of unshakable love. You can relive the story of Etiben and Gina by visiting Mopung Chuket. At Mopung Chuket, one can see two towers, each named after the lovers. The two towers are the tallest structures in the village and so always face each other. At the village's Sunkotnam Park, one can see an area with several carvings from local folktales of Aus. Some carvings are from the story of Etiben and Gina, 